Time for some more Contra, and I'm going to do things a little bit different this time. I'm still learning about this game, but I want to see what the AI can do. So I'm putting on all three factions, USA, China, GLA, and I'm playing on a familiar map. I heard some people in the comments recommend to me to not use Rise of the Red maps to use regular maps and how the USA Air Force General is overpowered and all this other stuff. So right now I just want to test those theories. I want to see if they'll play well on a really old Command and Conquer map and see if the Air Force General is just going to wipe out these two or, you know, maybe I can wipe them all out. I don't know. I really don't know what's going to happen here. Thing is, I suspect that I'm playing this wrong, and I know that sounds kind of weird, especially if you're used to Zero Hour, because it's like, hey, how can you play it wrong? But this is a mod, and the artificial intelligence is a little wonky, and the whole system's a little bit different. For example, I can't just build a strategy center right off the bat, which honestly isn't a design choice that I actually like, and that may kind of work into me playing this game wrong. It's kind of like if you picked a small map on Zero Hour and said no rush, it would kind of fuck up the whole game flow. So I'm trying to see if my own gameplay habits are fucking this up. Not that I think the mod's fucked up or anything like that, but my first experience wasn't really the best. But I'm not going to be too quick to write off this mod, because a lot of people seem to like it, and they wouldn't like it if there wasn't something to it. It may not be something that I like personally, but on the same end, it may just be something that I'm not getting yet, you know? Like, I'm not understanding the basic gameplay elements that make it fun. Which is something I see people do a lot in RTS games. You know, they'll play something like Planetary Annihilation, Starcraft, or Command and & Conquer, and because it doesn't play like the RTS game that they like, they think, oh, nope, this is flawed, I'm never going to touch it again, which, I don't know, that's just ignorant, in my opinion, anyways. Not that people aren't right to have those kind of opinions. I mean, early on in General's lifespan when it wasn't patched at all, not that the current patch is that great, but, you know, 1.0, the fucking vanilla, out-of-the-fucking-box version, GLA was pretty powerful, so somebody could say, hey, GLA is overpowered, and they wouldn't necessarily be wrong. But with that being said, they did patch the game, and you could do GLA versus GLA, and then you'd have symmetrical balance, so, you know, you couldn't just dismiss the game based off that, really. I mean, I guess you could, but at that point, it comes down to opinion, and more often than not, I see people just flat out dismiss games that they don't instantly sync to, you know what I mean? And basically what I'm getting at is that I think people rob themselves of good RTS experiences by just kind of being a little bit xenophobic about anything that doesn't just immediately suit them. And in a worst case scenario, and probably the most often scenario, it mostly winds down to them just getting their ass beat and then thinking, oh well, that person had an advantage and that's why I lost. It's because the game's bad. I'm not bad. The game's bad. That's the problem. Which, again, isn't always the case. I mean, there are some circumstances to where a game's just broken as fuck, but, you know, that's not 100% of the time. And like I said, you could just mirror match, you know, GLA versus GLA, China versus China. Then at that point, you really can't whine about any kind of strategic advantage or counterpicking or anything like that, because it's an even match. At that point, if you fuck up, that just means you don't have a good grasp on the gameplay and if the gameplay is something you don't prefer that's just something you don't prefer at the end of the day but that being said when you're doing comp stomps like i tend to do the artificial intelligence comes into play and if that's not designed well then yeah there's definitely problems with that i mean if your opponent's naturally broken then that is an issue there is a lack of balance when fighting the ai in this sage engine because the way that it's built the artificial intelligence just really isn't smart enough to keep up with players Basically, what the game does is just give the AI more units more quickly, more cheaply, so that you have to fight more. So, you know, it's the whole uh, war of attrition deal. For the most part, the difference between fighting a normal AI and a hard AI is that the AI has more stuff. They're not really using any advanced tactics. They're just building more quickly and going through their scripts more quickly, which is more difficult, but on the same end, that's not an actual uh, harder opponent. You know what I mean? And every RTS game does it. I mean, if you're going to have fucking deep blue fighting you on an RTS game, you would probably get your ass kicked even if they didn't have a boosted economy. But programming an intelligent AI to play an RTS game is not easy. I mean, maybe it's a little bit easier for chess and turn-based games, but for a real-time strategy game, that's a whole lot to keep up with. I'd wager the biggest issue to get around on that is the fact that it's not grid-based. You know what I mean? Every level is different. There's a... 
sort of a dynamic way that everything's handled. You got to deal with pathing. You got to deal with how the player plays. You got to deal with all the different air, ground, and well, sea units and red alert and red alert three, but uh, not in this game, just air and ground. But you know what I mean. There's a lot of variables to deal with, and when you're playing on a grid-based thing like chess or any other turn-based strategy game, there's a lot less for the AI to deal with, and they have more time to think, too. I think that's where Command & Conquer 4 went wrong. If you play that game, the AI is really hypersensitive. You know, they try to think about everything that you do, so you just end up in this game where the enemy's kiting you the whole time. They throw a couple of cheap units up at the front and bombard you, then the second you get close enough to attack them back, they just run away. Which is fucking frustrating. Nobody plays like that. I mean, even a human player is not going to have the... Well, you know, I take that back. I've seen a lot of people do some cheap bullshit with Humvees in this game. So, you know, maybe they were onto something there. But uh, I didn't like it too much. And I think a lot of other people didn't either. You know, the whole kiting thing, that kind of kills an RTS game. So, yeah, there's a lot of intricacies to programming AI in these kind of games. So I'm not going to be too harsh on the developer for having problems with that. Especially in the Sage Engine. The Sage Engine is old. That's just how it is. It's just a fucking old ass game engine. It's not meant to be highly competitive, especially with bots. That's just how that is. In my opinion, that's what made the general challenges so fun in that they were pre-constructed challenges, so it was the same thing over and over again, but the AI knew what to do, you know? It wasn't set into a skirmish map to where Maybe the map programmer didn't do a good job programming how the AI works on it, or maybe the AI is just not meant to play in that kind of scenario. It was custom tailored for the AI, which made the AI a lot more competitive, although they always did have an advantage over you, in some cases way too much like with Super Whip in general, but for the most part it was better designed. Anyways, I should probably form an attack right now and see if the AI in this mod can handle this map well and basically find out what my problem is here because last time it really wasn't impressive and granted I am playing on hard difficulty which is basically easy for this mod but well if the difference is is that they just build more and faster then well this is as smart as they're gonna get and if you're not familiar with this mod the reason why I'm just building these low tier units is that I'm forced to until I get to level 3 at which point I unlock the strategy center and then I can build the heavier stuff which Again, it's not a design choice that I really like. I think it takes a lot of the fun out of the game, in my opinion. Other people may like it, but personally, I don't like the mods that just complicate the tech tree for seemingly no reason. You know, it's depth, but it doesn't really add anything. It just makes things more complex for pretty much no reason. Yeah, that's not going to work. Maybe if I had heavier units that would work, but because these units are light and they're going to go single file through that little bottleneck, that's just going to fail. Which is, again, kind of where some of my complaints are coming from. The Sage Engine just isn't good enough to handle the kind of game they're designing here. This would be probably better if it was its own thing. You know, if it was made on an engine that was made to handle a whole bunch of units and all this other stuff that they're adding, but as it is... I'm just not seeing this working out very well in this engine. Or maybe I should just stop picking maps with bottlenecks. Maybe the whole mass unit thing in this engine's meant for wider maps and I should just play those. That could be a better solution. I think I'll try that next time. At least that may make things a little bit more fun. And thinking about it, that does make a lot of sense. One of the things that can really fuck a player over in RTS games is simple map selection. And I think that's even more important when fighting the AI, because the AI can only work around so much. If I'm having a problem getting through there with the AI-controlled units, you know, all their pathing and all that getting jammed up, then the artificial intelligence is just not going to be able to handle it at all. Though looking at China's front line here, your guess is as good as mine. I don't know if they're not able to build on a smaller level, or if the AI is just not programmed well to defend itself. It could be both, actually. I guess if I had to just spot a problem and name it, I'd say the biggest problem I'm seeing right here is that the Sage Engine just isn't meant for huge enemy hordes like this. It can do it, but it does it poorly. So while I'm sure this handles better in a player versus player scenario, against the AI, it's just not going to work out. The artificial intelligence just doesn't have the intelligence to play with the huge horde like this. 
Not that the general's AI is very smart to start with, but the basic AI is not programmed to deal with large hordes. Usually they'd send a couple overlords with some RPG troopers and some MIGs, that kind of thing, but, you know, not like 30 fucking overlords and 150 RPG troopers or anything like that, and they're damn sure not able to defend against it. At least not on a fair level. You know, if you give them a bunch of artillery and a bunch of long-range stuff, they could probably handle it, but if they gotta send units against your units, they're gonna come up short pretty much every single time unless they just have an excessive amount of them. But even then, they're not gonna be able to command them properly, so at that point, it's just a war of attrition. You can take out two for every one of yours, but they're gonna build four for every one of yours, so then they win that, but... Not because the AI's better, just because the AI had more. It doesn't know how to trade with you, you know what I mean? It doesn't know how to send four RPG troopers in to take out an overlord and lose a couple RPG troopers but still win the fight, you know, financially. It's just not smart enough to do that. Mainly because they don't know how to flank, but additionally because the AI tends to work on lanes, they just send stuff straight at you for the most part, so... Yeah, all that combined kind of makes for a shitty experience fighting the artificial intelligence, no matter what mod you're playing, really. The problem I see with Contra when it comes to that, though, is that there's so many units, and maybe it's just because I'm playing as Robot General, but from what I'm seeing, there's so many units that it makes that problem worse. Then again, like I said earlier, I may just be playing this wrong. I did set the cache to 50k, so of course there's going to be more units, but... I kind of suspect that if I turn the cash level down, the AI is going to produce just as much as it's producing now. I think the cash really just plays to my advantage more, which again, just means that I can trade better with the AI. I can stand to lose more of these units and, you know, still bounce back. But considering how the tech trees handled, I don't think I'm going to have enough cash to trade with them to get to level three to make a fucking strategy center so that I can make higher tech units so that I can counter them with strategy instead of just finances. Then again, some of that may be due to the fact that I'm playing as Robot General. I'm sure that if I play as another Chinese General like the Tank one, I'll probably have some heavier units I can use. But again, if I don't have access to the high-tech stuff till I get to rank 3, then that means I gotta fight the AI. And if the AI has more units than I do, I'll get fed more, I'll get XP more. But on the same end, I'm just gonna have to throw weak units against their units and hope that I you know, get a better trade out of the deal. And when that's the main strategy of an RTS game, it really takes a lot of the strategy out of it. At that point, it's less about flanking and map control and things like that than it is about build orders and maintaining your finances, which are important. But when that's all you have, it's kind of like eating a bread sandwich. You know what I mean? You want some meat, you want some cheese, you want some maybe mayonnaise or mustard or whatever you prefer. I guess that would be your StarCraft or Command & Conquer in this metaphor, but you get what I mean. You want more than just the basics, and this, for the most part, is just the basics. Though, like I said, that may just be my fault. I'm playing as Robot General again. I have the cash set to 50k, and I'm playing on a map with bottlenecks on it. So if I play on a wide open map, choose a different faction, and, you know, mix things up a little bit, I may get a better experience. So I'm not ready to quit on this one yet, but I probably won't play as Robot General again, and I'm definitely not going to pick a map with fucking bottlenecks on it, because the AI just can't fucking handle it. Though I think that's more of a zero hour problem and not a Contra problem. I do think Contra adds to it just a little bit with all the massive unit battles going on here, which are cool. I always wanted to play Command & Conquer with more units and more complexity, but sometimes more isn't better. And I think that's the thing I'm suffering with right now. I added a bunch more to something that already adds more, and it just made everything worse. Yes. Then again, I could just be playing this wrong. I mean, I got the strategy center now, and I think I could have built some artillery earlier, but I think trying to counter their artillery with my artillery would have just been another kind of stalemate situation. And, uh, I don't know, there's a lot to this that I don't quite understand yet, so... None of what I'm saying here is concrete. I mean, for fuck's sake, I had the fucking strategy center and I was talking about not having one, so I'm probably making this really fucking confusing. I'm just giving my theories on what I think about the game, how it plays, and whether or not I'm going to continue playing it based on its quality, you know what I mean? I'm kind of questioning its quality right now, which is generally something I try to avoid doing until I have a lot of experience with the game, but I've been playing these mods so often, if I tried to learn every single one and give my opinion about it, it would take about a month before I can make a fucking video. <laughs> Getting good at Shockwave, Rise of the Reds, and Contra, and Zero Hour, all those games, at least just knowing the basics, that takes time. And I think that's what kind of turns people off from different RTS games, and I can understand that, you know? You don't want to have to learn 
It's kind of like learning different languages. That's a really good comparison. It's like, if you know English and Spanish, unless you're really fucking into language, you're not going to try to learn French, German, or Chinese. You're probably just going to stick with English and Spanish. Which, again, is probably why I play against bots so much. I like to play a bunch of different RTS games, but I tend not to master any of them because it takes a lot of time and dedication. You know, you got to go online, you got to play every single day, pretty much, and you really got to learn the game to the point to where you can actually start to break it a little bit, which in an RTS game, breaking the game is just strategy, unless you're going to do a scud glitch or something, but personally, I prefer to play a variety of games, and when I do stick to a game, I like to play multiple characters and that kind okay. of thing. So if I'm playing Command & Conquer, while I do prefer GLA, I kind of get bored just playing GLA all the time and mastering that one faction, or in the case of Zero Hour, picking a China, okay. America, and GLA faction, then mastering three of them. That kind of thing just doesn't appeal to me. It's just my opinion, though, you know? That kind of goes back to the whole thing about people playing an RTS game and saying it's shit because they didn't do well. I'm not going to say Contra is shit, but I will say that, one, I'm not doing too well at it, and two, it's just kind of not my thing. At least, that's what I'm feeling right now, and it may just be because I'm playing as the USA faction and I don't like him. It'd be kind of like playing Generals and just playing as the Stealth General and not liking him and going, oh, fuck this game. So I'm going to have to give it more of a chance, but as of right now, I just don't get anything from this right now. It's not interesting to me. It's kind of... Well, it's kind of a clusterfuck in my opinion. There's all this shit going on on screen. There's all these units that I don't really understand yet. And a lot of that goes into me just being new at the game. But on the same end, it's not gripping me. I'm not interested in this. You know, I'd rather play Shockwave, for example, or Rise of the Reds even. And Rise of the Reds is arguably as complex as this, but it's better arranged, I guess is a good way to put it. Everything in it makes sense, and it doesn't just put something in there for the sake of it being there, which is kind of what I'm getting from Robot General and all these other generals right now. And that they have a bunch of crazy shit, but it's kind of just crazy for the sake of being crazy, and not crazy as an, oh wow, that's fucking cool, like the ECA faction. The ECA faction is fucking crazy and badass with all the artillery and everything, but it's not random. It feels less sloppy, I guess is a good way to put it. Now, granted, I'm judging a mod, so to call a mod sloppy is really fair to the mod since they're doing it for free. It's kind of like going up to somebody who made a piece of art that they're just showing off for free and going, Oh, that, uh, the line works so shitty. Blah, blah. Yeah, that's kind of petty. But if I was going to buy this, I would be pretty pissed off that I bought it. Though I will say my problems with this game are kind of more my opinion than me trying to state any kind of fact. It's not like... Uh, for instance, a mismatch online. You can say, hey, the netcode's shitty. But that's not the case with Contra's balance. This could be more for people that want to play online versus players. And I may just be playing it poorly, and I may just not appreciate the things that other people appreciate about it. Which, honestly, is an opinion that can be changed, you know? I think the first time I played Generals, I didn't like it because there was no naval units. I was like, oh... I could build anywhere and there's no naval units. This is bullshit. I'm going to go play Red Alert 2. But then I started playing Generals more and I started to appreciate the differences. So, again, I think I need to spend more time with it. But as of right now, I'm just not having fun with this match here. Like, just my raw opinion, first impression. Well, not really first impression, but early impression. Is that it's a lot about just uh, war of attrition, you know. And that's the most boring type of RTS game I can imagine. You know, at that point, it's kind of like SimCity. Which city's worth the most money? They're the victor. And uh, that's lame. If there's more building than there is fighting, and if it's more based off your build order than it is, you know, your choices, then I'm just not into it as much. I'm kind of getting the same problem I had with Planetary Annihilation. I really like the idea of Planetary Annihilation, but the whole resource gathering fucking base micromanagement shit to where I got like two or three planets to look out after and I'm gonna get hit from behind somewhere and once they do it they're gonna take that planet then I'm gonna try to hit them from behind and take their planet it's interesting and it technically is flanking but on the same end there's so much time you gotta pour into that and it's just not as strategic as a smaller game like zero hour to where 
Yeah, you could build a bunch of units, but you're not going to be as successful as somebody who has a good strategy, basically. Then again, that's probably mostly my problem. When it comes to RTS games, I don't like having to hammer out very specific build orders very quickly in a super anal retentive way. You know, I kind of like being able to sit there and think for a second and choose a really good strategy, but, you know, still having the real-time strategy format of having to, you know, watch out how much time you're spending and not sit around doing nothing. So I don't think I'm ever going to play an RTS game on a professional level, just because it would suck all the fun out of the game for me, basically. At that point, I would just be hammering shit out as quickly as possible and, you know, trying to predict the enemy as easily as I can. And I like predicting the enemy, that part I do like, but a good comparison would be how some professional StarCraft II players played, where you seem just hammering the shit out of the keyboard over and over again and doing, like, 50 keystrokes that mean nothing just so that when they're ready to move, they have the thing selected that they want to select or whatever the yes. fuck. I don't even understand that, really, to be honest. But, done. yeah, that kind of shit doesn't appeal to me at all. It takes a lot of the fun out of the game for me. The thought of playing a strategy game with as many keystrokes as I put into a fighting game, that Your sounds orders? like the most boring fucking thing wow. I could ever master. Which I'm sure is impressive to watch, and okay. maybe fun to watch, but for the player, at least for a player like me, that's fucking boring as hell. I'd rather take all that time and effort and learn how to do big-ass combos in Mortal Kombat X or basically just take all that energy and put it into an action game. Because when I play an RTS game, I play it to kind of sit down and think. And when I play an action game, I'm all for just hammering the shit out of buttons and, you know, being really hyperactive about it. But I just can't get that excited about an RTS game. In my opinion, playing an RTS game like that is kind of like booting up Fallout 3 and not using bats at all and trying to play it like a Twitch shooter. That sounds so goddamn boring. Like, it would just ruin the fucking game for me. I wouldn't be able to enjoy it at all. I guess you could say I like the strategy part of real-time strategy games, but the real-time part, I kind of prefer that to take a back seat. Like, if a real-time strategy game's mostly about the real-time, then I'm just going to be doing the same keystrokes over and over and over again and the same strategy on the same maps every single time, and... In my opinion, that takes a lot of the strategy out, because at that point, I'm just racing to hit the keys quicker than the other guy, which is more of a fighting game thing. You know, at that point, like I said, I'd rather just play Mortal Kombat. Thinking back to the General's Challenges videos, I used to say that some of the challenges feel more like puzzles than challenges, but if they felt like I was playing some kind of action game to where I really got to hit that button really, really quick, and I had to make sure it's the right fucking button so that I can get to the area as quickly as possible to finish off the enemy, that would be a million times fucking worse. I would not like that whatsoever. Which is kind of why I hated the Super Weapon General Challenge. You know, that one's about getting attacked early on and rebuilding and rebuilding and rebuilding and rebuilding repetitively over and over and over again until you finally get to the point that you can attack her and beat her, which, in my opinion, is kind of like playing a really fucking fast version of Dance Dance Revolution with no music, you know? No rhythm or anything, just... Hit the buttons in the right order as quickly as possible and win, which, eh, not a huge fan of that. I'd call that more of an action puzzle game than I would an RTS game. There's strategy to it, but it's just one strategy, and that's the one that you use every single time. Oh no, wait, I got a better comparison. It's like playing a speedrun of a game. You know, that's interesting to watch. And if you're really into it, I'm sure it's great for the player, but me personally, anytime I've tried to speedrun a game, it's been a miserable experience because it's more about memory than it is about strategy or anything like that. You're never going to... Well, you might develop a new strategy here and there, but for the most part, it's like doing a choreographed dance. The fun part about speedruns to me is watching them because I'm never going to master any of that. I'm not going to spend a month or two months or who knows, maybe two or three years playing the same game over and over again so that I know pixel per pixel where I need to be, when I need to be there, and what I need to do. That's... Not the funnest thing in the world, in my opinion, and I'm sure that a lot of RTS players really like that. And I'm not saying that they're wrong for liking it or anything like that. I'm just saying it's not for me. It's It bores the shit out of me. In fact, I don't even really like watching RTS players do that. I mean, it's cool and it's impressive, but watching somebody do that without any kind of personality, you don't get to hear their opinions on anything, they're just sitting there hammering shit out. That's so fucking boring. That's why I don't watch StarCraft 2 tournaments. I tried watching a couple when I saw the fucking camera go onto the keyboard and they're just showing the guy fucking tapping the fucking key over and over again just to have it primed for when he needs to do the thing. 
I laughed for about five minutes at that, Waiting then I just clicked the video off because it started to fucking damage my brain. Like, I couldn't comprehend why that's fun. Which, again, is my opinion, Let's but, move. you know, you see that shit all over the place. There's lots of things that other people think are fun that other people think are just completely fucking miserable. I'm sure somebody's watching me right now and going, God, this guy's playing like shit. Fuck this. I'm going to go watch those StarCraft people. And hey, more power to you. You know, you like what you like, you don't like what you don't like. If we didn't have different tastes, then everything would be the same, and we'd get bored of it pretty fucking quick. And you know, thinking about it, that may be some of the reason I'm not appreciating Contra a whole lot right now. I love Generals and I love Zero Hour, but after a certain point, skirmishes against the bots get boring, and to me right now, it feels like I'm relearning a game that I've already played the shit out of. It's kind of like I completely forgot everything about Generals except for all my experiences playing it, if that makes any sense. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain it. It's kind of like the feeling you get when you love a game, but you have no desire to go back to play it. Which, usually, I don't have that much of a problem coming back to Generals. I like the Zero Hour challenges, uh, the Shockwave challenges I didn't finish, but they were interesting. Maybe I should try the Contra challenges. I've heard those are pretty good, or at least they're very difficult, which, I don't know, makes for a fun watch, if nothing else. And they're a fair challenge, you know? Even if they're fucking frustratingly difficult and maybe a little bit kind of like that Super Weapon General challenge that I hate so much, it does kind of come down to being a puzzle, so at least it's not some kind of unsolvable mess. There's a solution to it, you just have to keep working at it and look for the weaknesses. That can be pretty fun. But right now, playing this skirmish, it just kind of feels like I got the rules flipped on me. Like it's the same game, but everything just got mixed around, which may feel like a fresh take to some, but for me right now, it's feeling like I'm just playing Generals in a different way, instead of in a better way, which isn't really anything I'm too interested in. Or I guess a better way to put it is that I think Shockwave did it better, which is probably a controversial opinion to have, because I know this mod's pretty beloved, but I just like Shockwave more. I feel like that the changes that they did to the factions were a little bit more natural, and, uh, well, balance, I don't really give a shit about that, I'll be honest. These Command & Conquer games are never really balanced. The only way to really get a balanced game out of these games is to do a mirror match like I talked about earlier. But, I don't know, I just kind of feel like I got a better experience out of Shockwave. Can't really nail why that is, though. Maybe it's because that was the first mod I really delved into and, you know, played extensively, but... It may also have to do with the fact that the AI felt a little bit more coordinated, so since I'm fighting AI, it may work better in Shockwave than it does in Contra. That's a possibility. It's kind of a tough one to nail down. I think I have to play Contra a little bit more to really get a good feel for why I'm not enjoying it. And who knows, maybe if I play it and try to figure out why I'm not enjoying it, I'll find out why I'm not enjoying it, then I'll enjoy it. So... Yeah, like I said, you always got to give an RTS game a chance. If you try to dismiss it too early, then you could end up missing out on something that you really like. That's something I learned from Red Alert 3. At first, I played it on the console because my PC died back then, and I just didn't have the money to make a new one, but I had the Xbox, so I was like, ah, fuck it, Red Alert 3. I played Red Alert on the PlayStation, I'll play it on the Xbox 360, and, uh, yeah, that didn't translate too well. I mean, it's one thing to play the old Red Alert on a PlayStation 1 controller. That game's not overly complicated or anything like that, but trying to play Red Alert 3 on a 360 controller is a fucking nightmare. So, for a long time, I kind of had a stigma with the game to where I didn't want to acknowledge it, I didn't want to play it. I'm like, no, no, Red Alert 2 is better. The series died after Red Alert 2. Then I went back to play Red Alert 3, I'm like, hey, it's really not that bad. It's not the best. It's not better than Red Alert 2, but... It's not miserable. It's no Command & Conquer 4. You can play Command & Conquer 4 and pick up any other RTS game and it'll be like fucking gold. Uh, I'd do that, but I really don't think I have it in me to complete the Command & Conquer 4 campaign. That's not even an issue of a game just feeling stagnant to me. That's an issue of playing a game that I literally don't ever want to touch again. That one skirmish I did was so fucking awful. I just can't imagine playing a campaign full of that bullshit. Like, I complain about the Sage engine that Generals runs on and how shitty it is and how the pathing's all off, but I can play Command & Conquer 4, which has a better engine. It's still Sage. It's Sage 2.0, but it's still a better version of the engine, and it just Careful. plays like garbage. You know, it doesn't matter if the pathing's good if the game plays like shit. So yeah, while I'm saying I'm not enjoying Contra right now, I would say it's more mediocre than bad. 
I'm not having a bad time playing it, but I could think of a dozen other games I'd rather play, especially those in the Command & Conquer General series. Like, I'd almost rather just go through another Zero Hour challenge. You know, maybe with a uh, China tank or something like that. Which I kind of hate saying, because it's obvious playing this that they put a lot of work into it. The units look really good, the sounds are pretty good. They're not the best, but they're pretty damn good for a mod. And, uh... Everything in general here feels pretty damn good. I mean, the AI's a little bit off, and... Well, the game's just not meant to handle this many units at once, so the pathing's a bit buggy, but... Other than those complaints, it's still a good mod. I think the reason I feel like Shockwave is more fun to me is that it didn't fuss around with the format too much. I don't really like what they did with the whole XP system and having to unlock your tech building through getting rank 3. That just doesn't appeal to me. It... It's not a balance issue more than it is just a issue of personal taste. Like, I don't think that that makes the game unbalanced. I just think that it makes it something that I'm not interested in, which is purely subjective, you know what I mean? I can't tell people that it's a bad mod. I can just say that I didn't enjoy it. And I think that's an important distinction that a lot of people don't make when they're talking about RTS games. Like, you'll hear a StarCraft player say, Oh, the entire Command & Conquer series sucks. <laughs> it's just fucking laughable. And usually it comes down to, Oh, well, it's not Pro League, or, Oh, well, it's not like this, and this system's bad, and this system's unbalanced, and really it's just down to their personal taste. Not that there aren't any RTS games that are unbalanced. In fact, I think every single one of them's unbalanced. Unless, like I said, you're going to do a symmetrical fight, there's going to be a lack of balance there, either due to the player experience or just due to the fact that the game needs a little bit more tweaking here and there. And even the oldest, most refined strategy games like chess, they still have issues like the first move advantage. That's a big issue, and I think in RTS games, probably the biggest issue is that the companies have enough money to make these games, but... The amount of time it would take to support and oh, test a game terrible. to the point that it's actually completely balanced... That would be a huge undertaking. You can kind of see that amount of effort being put into MOBA games like League of Legends and Dota, but those games aren't one versus one. There's always a team element there, so that team play element kind of works as a buffer. You know, you don't have to fight one versus one. You can always run away and get back up if you have a counter pick coming after you, that kind of thing. Or you can just run back to the minions and outnumber the person. So yeah, with that buffer, it's a lot easier to balance. For an RTS game... You gotta keep one versus one in mind and team games, and that sounds like something that you could spend your whole life trying to balance, and every time you balance one thing, it unbalances another thing, and you just end up in this endless loop of trying to make everything even, but you just can't quite do it. So yeah, it's shit like that that makes me not take people seriously when they say, oh, this RTS game is bad because it's unbalanced. It's like, fuck you. There's no way that anybody's favorite RTS game doesn't have balance issues, and you can't really judge a game based on that solely. You really gotta judge these games by which ones you have the most fun playing. Because at the end of the day, like I've said about two or three times right now, if you're gonna bitch about a game being unbalanced, then do a mirror match, and then settle it like that. Every RTS game is balanced if you pick the same faction. That's just how that works. I mean, maybe there could be some map factors, but there's always symmetrical maps that you can pick, so... If you say you won't play an RTS game because it's unbalanced, just pick a symmetrical map and pick the same factions. Boom, problem solved. What they really mean when they say that is, I don't like that RTS game, and let me tell you why the one I like's better. Which is such a dick thing to do. That's the attitude of somebody who sees people having fun, can't stand it, and goes and tells them why they're not actually having fun. Which I never try to do that. Like, I'm not enjoying Contra... Right now, and like I said, maybe I'll enjoy it later if I play it some more. But I never tell people, oh, Contra's bad. Let me prove why it's bad and why you should all play Shockwave and Rise of the Reds. That's such a fucking stupid bullshit attitude. It's literally no different than someone coming up to you during lunch and saying, oh, turkey sandwiches suck. Ham is better. Let me tell you why it's better and why you shouldn't be enjoying that sandwich that you like. I kind of like comparing RTS games to sandwiches. I'm going to go make a sandwich.